comments. Any common denominator questions, we want to make sure that we cover those for folks. Um, but Joel H., Joel H. is in a lot of these, isn't he? He's, he watches. Uh, We're live, Mike. Hey, we are live, and we are looking at the comments right now. Hey, what's up, Joel H.? He is in the comments. We got Corey in the comments. We got Angel and Julius in the comments. You guys are lighting up the, the, uh, the hot chat there, and we appreciate it. Ask your questions. Ju you know, uh, Joel is actually saying right here, he's curious. Oh, got to turn down the volume. I always forget to do that. We are live. This is Stone Coat Countertops. Guys, in this video, we're going to show you how to apply the ultimate top coat over platinum. Okay? We did platinum yesterday on this piece of wood that we made look like stone. We've got it prepped. I'm going to show you how to prep how to finish, how to apply the top coat, how to do it over platinum the right way every time. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. What's up, guys? My name is Mike Quist. I'm a contractor and an epoxy professional. I've been doing this for the better part of my professional career, and I absolutely love mimicking Mother Nature and making things look very expensive and high-end on a dime and this is exactly in that alley, okay? Part of the epoxy world is known that epoxies want to amber over time, they want to yellow over time, they want to patina, just like a natural stone like marble. I had a good conversation yesterday with a guy uh, out in New York and he does this every single day. I gotta make sure this is turned off. Um, he does this every single day and he prefaces to his clients, say, hey look, epoxy can yellow, okay? But stone coat epoxy is known in the industry for the most non-yellowing products out there. Well, we've upgraded that even more to our platinum. And that's what we poured last night. But you see, on our live video last night, we explained that we were having some calls that there was some blisters happening. Well, we figured out, we believe we figured out exactly what was causing that, and that's the recoat window. You have to recoat this differently than our original stone coat countertop product right here. That's our original, that's the part A, okay? And then we got art coat. Let me find some art coat and I'll show you what that looks like. Art coat, where are you? Where are you? There's, dang it, man. Did I use up all my art coat? See, I'm not prepped, guys. Well, I got another bottle. It looks like this, but it says art coat on it and that's our art coat, okay? But those two products, they have a very long recoat window, meaning you don't have to be in a hurry to do your clear coat. The Platinum, we designed it for the pro, for the professional, somebody who has done these coatings, who understands how to do the color effects, who understands how to do the veins and the fracturing. Actually, check this out. Check out this fracturing right here. So I really like how that came out in yesterday's video. I, this, this technique right here, I usually do it with black spray paint and alcohol. This one I did white spray paint and I did pewter metallic in the alcohol. And like, get in here close, Luke, so they can see. Can 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 you see that real good? Oh, yeah. So I really like what that looks like. I like how this particular vein came out in yesterday's video. So what we did yesterday is we actually poured both the color. Yesterday, this is what I did. Here was the step. Uh, I did white undercoat, stone coat undercoat. I let that dry. Let all the water escape. Then I did our color coat live, and I did the clear coat live. We did that whole thing in an hour and a half, uh, those two coats. We let it tack free to the touch, the back of my hand, and then I did that clear coat. I did that all in that recoat window, meaning it bonded together. You see, what was happening is the clear coat and the color coat, if the color coat was drying too fast and that clear coat couldn't cross-link or bond with it, we weren't getting great adhesion, meaning sanding wasn't enough. We needed better adhesion. When you add a hybrid coating like the Platinum is, our, our whole goal was this, was to be able to take it outside 
in the sun in Arizona and not have that coating yellow. And that's what we accomplished, but we are having some, some harder time getting that to adhere to each other like we do with our original SCC and the art coat. So per all the chemists behind this product and going, all right, here's what you do. We thought you had a little wider window of, of recoat, but humidity can mess with you. So if you have higher humidity, you need to do that faster. So our, our safe zone is after it's tack free to the touch and you can do the clear, do it right then, don't wait. Well, I told these guys, I said, guys, look, in a perfect world, everybody's gonna do that, but what if they miss that? What if they got a call, somebody's having a baby, something happened, emergency, they gotta leave, they come back and they wanna do their clear and they miss that recoat window, what do they do? They said, well, it's, it's second best, it's not best, but second best, you're gonna wanna sand heavy grit. So I actually messed with that. Here, here I got 100, 100 grit right here, or 120 grit. This is what I sanded this with, and this has not been sanded. So I will sand this for you, but um, I, I tested the 120. It went really good. You could probably do this even heavier grit, but I got 120 grit because I'm gonna do the ultimate top coat. But let's say I was just doing color and clear. What I wanna do if I miss that recoat window is sand heavy and then wipe it with xylene. Xylene is pretty aggressive and it's almost gonna re-emulsify or it's gonna wake that up a little bit and you're gonna be able to, to bond, okay? But don't just scuff sand with 220 on your color coat and, and then go ahead and throw down your clear. You've been spoiled rotten by our other products that allow you to do that and kind of not, not do the best sanding job in the world because the stuff bonds like you wouldn't believe. But the platinum, it needs more love in that bond because of the different formula and it needs a better bond mechanically or it has to be done in that recoat window. Does that make sense? Does that answer what I'm trying to tell you? I hope it does. I am guilty of talking a long time. So in these videos, we've been getting some good feedback that these have been almost, uh, you know, uh, th th they've been received as training and that's what we're trying to portray here is, is real world training real world application. And I actually had a lady, uh, Lana, who, who, who gave me a call and she said, the platinum looked good until she took it outside in the sun and it, or outside in the heat and it, and, it, and it then had a blister. So I go, ah, I don't think that's the problem. I just think it was the adhesion, but maybe the curing faster or something did that. So we actually took this outside. It's, uh, right now it's 76 in the shop. I'll bet you it's 95 degrees outside. And I had it there uh, outside for about five hours in the direct sunlight, fresh, both coats, thinking if, if the sun's gonna cause something, that's how it's gonna, it's gonna really show and, and, and it looks great. And we brought it in, it was pretty hot, still pretty hot to the touch, right, Chris? Yes. And uh, now it's not nice and cool to the touch. I've sanded it. I'm gonna sand, a, I'm gonna apply that top coat because the, the platinum, you're gonna wanna use a top coat on it because you want that real durable scratch resistance. And that's what the Ultimate Top Coat does. It also gives it, it takes it from this shine and makes it a natural looking finish, which I know my clients want. They don't wanna see fingerprints. They don't want a shiny, shiny surface. They want it a little bit more toned down and it gives me forgiveness. It allows me to, uh, to, to sand all of my pieces and roll the top coat on without having to go through the polishing and the honing and that kind of thing. It gives me very consistent results. Okay, check out this rock face edge. I like how that came out. Do you guys like how that looks after it dried? I think that looks really, really cool. Now look over here where it's, where it's sanded. That's, uh, that's what it looks like sanded, but we're gonna wake that up. You see there's some spots there that aren't fully sanded, that's okay. I don't want to over sand, but I know that that top coat is going to still bond. But in between those layers, that recoat window is important. So we've updated our website. You got a two to four hour recoat window, but this is good news for a pro. If you're brand new to this world, start with our original products. They have all the working time you could ever imagine, but not the added benefit of being able to get a job done the same day. Like you literally can pour your color, pour your clear, come back the next day, and do the ultimate top coat. Now I also have question, have been, I don't know where I put that sample. I also have been getting some questions on if I don't like my ultimate top coat 
and I, I rolled it out and I didn't watch your video on how to roll it out and I got some lap lines, if that's you and you want to do another coat, you have to sand the ultimate top coat. You have to create a mechanical bond with that as well. You see there's additives that make it easy to clean, slippery, it's smooth, but it also doesn't want to bond to itself again. And so you need to sand that heavily. I'd even go 80 grit on that and then roll another, another top coat on there. I did it the other day where I didn't sand at all just to test it and I could start to get my finger under there and peel some of that off. So you need a mechanical bond. But here over the Platinum, I've, I've had zero issues with adhesion with that ultimate top coat and on the epoxy same thing it's been a fabulous product it's just on top of itself and so again what I'm referring to is is a three-step actually it's a four-step process okay step number one I'll be right back I'll go get it go ahead and ask a question while I'll, I'll be right back Chris what's the question man yeah uh, actually there's a question right here to um repeat uh, to do kind of a recap <laughs> okay that's, that's what, what I'm doing. doing I'm gonna do a recap because I know that I, I covered a lot there and I don't want to I don't want to be confusing okay okay here's step one undercoat okay zoom in on that that's step one okay so so with the undercoat what you're gonna have is you're gonna go over wood plywood MDF you're going to go over old surfaces. If it's an old surface like laminate or solid surface or cultured marble or corian or, or something like that that is non-porous, you're going to want a bonding primer. That bonding primer makes sure that the undercoat sticks to non-porous. Well, most of my projects here, I go over MDF, which is wood right there. So if I'm going to go over MDF, you don't need bonding primer because it's not porous so there's your let's kind of talk about like a like a tree it starts with are you porous like wood or are you non porous if you're non porous one extra step bonding primer if you're porous wood plywood concrete things like that start with your undercoat okay and that's only we're talking countertops we're not talking wood slabs that's a different video we're talking countertops so got undercoat that's going to give you your base color you can choose black or white all of these recipes can be done choosing black or white that's step one step two is the color that we did yesterday okay so uh, let's see let me grab let me grab this right here so color coat consists of additives, okay? Try not to get the surface dirty, so let me set them right here. So you got, you got metallic powders, um, you got our epoxy dyes, and then you got uh, spray paints, or uh, Rust-Oleum, I don't have a can, oh, here you go. You got, you got spray paints, okay? This is done as your color coat, okay? Now whether you're using our platinum, or our countertop epoxy or our art coat, you can add those additives into those coatings, okay? Now in this particular case, what we did yesterday is we used the platinum with those additives as the color coat. And then immediately after that skinned over, about an hour and 15 minutes after that, we just mixed up the same product with zero additives, which is what we refer as step three, our clear coat. So step one, undercoat, step two, color coat all this stuff and your clear and then step three your clear coat and then finally today step four our ultimate top coat this is optional in epoxy okay in countertop in art but the coating with our platinum I highly recommend and I will not do it without this top coat because the surface, because it's non-yellowing and because of the additives in this coating, it's not as durable as the epoxy is by itself. So you really need an ultimate top coat. Believe me, I wish the technology was there that we didn't need four steps. I wish you could do color and be done and you were done. The problem with that is we're adding, you know, 
We're adding additives that give you fantastic results. We're adding dyes, we're adding these things. But when you add these, these additives, it actually degrades the formulation or it's not food safe, okay? So you do need a build or a, a, a top layer on top of that to make it food safe. So I hope that's helping answer these questions, but the top coat is what's gonna go over the platinum today. So let's say I was brand new and I didn't wanna use the platinum because I didn't wanna go fast. I wanted all the time in the world and I didn't want to have a, a tight recoat window. I could do that same system with the epoxy, our stone coat epoxy, or our stone coat art coat. I hope that makes sense to you guys. I, uh, I don't have any formal training as a teacher and I've been accused of being confusing at times. So I hope that's not too confusing. All right, so we're on step four. So really, step number four, ultimate top coat. Step one, undercoat. Step two, color coat. Step three, clear coat. Step four, top coat. Was that clear? Yeah. You, you followed me, right? I did. I understand every word. Yes. Okay. So we're going to sand this, right? We got to sand this. I got my random orbital sander. I got my green juice. Man, I got to tell you. So Corona, man, I got some Corona weight I put on. So I'm trying to lose that Corona weight, trying to, uh, trying to make my wife say that I'm pretty again. And so I'm juicing. Holy cow, I, I drink a lot of caffeine and I have not had any caffeine for the last two days and I'm on day two of my green juice, uh, my green juice exploration. I've done that before. I lost some good weight juicing. I got a video on our channel way deep in the channel about that and it is tough. Yeah, like day two, day two sucks. Day three and four kind of suck. After that, you start kind of Starting to feel good, but cutting that caffeine, woo, that's tough. All right, we're at 120 grit, and I'm gonna sand this. Okay, I'm gonna sand these edges too. Chris, what question can I answer while uh, I'm sanding here now that it's a little quieter? Uh, Javier wants to know um, if he wants to uh, epoxy his wife's bouquet from their wedding. Uh, what epoxy would you recommend if you wanted to try that? Man, uh, you know, I've seen mixed results, but a lot of people will do flowers and first they'll seal it. So you almost need to seal those flowers with an acrylic or something like that. That's not going to destroy them, but it'll kind of make them hard where they'll, uh, they'll, then you could pour like a casting epoxy. Our super cast is pretty dang good. If you're going to cast them, if you just want them to stay flowers, uh, I've seen people embed flowers in the casting and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, to be honest, Javier, I don't have a lot of experience with, uh, preserving the, the flowers and because it's your bouquet, uh, from your wedding, which congratulations, man, congrats. And, and if that was recent, I could imagine those are alive. But if, if it's just old bouquet, I would probably go, um, go to like artist till death, go to mixed media girl. I bet they can help me with that. Um, I just have not preserved flowers before. So um, I would say it wouldn't be hard, but I don't want you to mess up your, your wife's uh, bouquet. Good question. Any other questions? I'm, I'm still sanding here, Chris. I'm still available for Q&A, man. 
uh, what's the um, uh, people who haven't got the top coat yet? What should they expect from the sheen level? Uh, it's a pretty natural sheen. Uh, you got it right there. You want to film like before and after on that so that they could see uh, the difference in the sheen. If you're doing like a white marble, this is really goes good with like a Carrera marble look. Looks honed. Are you able to see it there, Luke? So it still shows a lot of the, the effects beautifully. It just uh, tones it down a little bit. Okay, I got that sanded. I'm gonna wipe the dust off. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of uh, acetone here. I just wanna get all that dust off. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna let this cure for the next few days, and then um, I'm gonna try to destroy it, okay? I'm gonna try to delaminate it. I'm gonna try to see if there's any chink in the armor here and see if this is a weak system. But uh, my hypothesis is it was, we were having an issue at that Rico window that it was just even sitting for a few hours if you're in high humidity, might have been too long. So uh, you're gonna have to work that platinum faster than we're used to which will get your jobs done fast. Everything sets, you get the benefits of, you know, your color staying right where you got it, that kind of thing. A little bit more predictable that way, but it is a little more finicky on the schedule of time. You can't let it sit for a month and then come back without having to really sand and uh, get this ready to, um, to do your clear on it. Now, if you, if you got your color just perfect, and maybe you didn't need it super food safe because it's a windowsill or something like that. Man, if you got your color coat dialed, just, just do your ultimate top coat right over that. Um, same thing, let it dry and then uh, sand that, that, that recoat window for the ultimate top coat, I don't believe is as imperative as the between the two layers. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's the real real time we gotta move. So this video is really geared towards the people using platinum, although Applying the top coat is going to be the same whether you go over, you know, our normal or our art coat. It's, it's all the same application, but we're talking about the, the video I did yesterday live. And if you guys haven't subscribed, man, check out the uh, Luke and Chris and Doc. They all worked on getting the footage really crisp for you. So you felt like you were right here getting, getting trained. And man, I, I think you guys did a good job. Thank you, Luke and Chris. Thanks, Mike. I got Chris is at the comments today. Mitch has the week off. Mitch is, uh, man, I don't even know where Mitch is, but he's still working somehow. I don't even know how he's working. He's like, I see that all this work gets done from him, and he's not even here. So, Mitch, congratulations on that, however you figured that out, and uh, although he's just not on the live, so we miss him. Guys, if you miss Mitch, say, I miss Mitch <laughs> in the comments. Uh, I know I miss him. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do one more little wipe here just to get any extra dust off. Tony uh, has been asking, uh, how can he hire you? <laughs> he wants to do uh, countertops and cabinets in his house, I guess. Um, how can you hire me? Um, I don't know. Where's Tony live? That's what I would need to know. Okay. I'm cleaning out my paint tray with my shirt, which my shirt's kind of dusty. That's probably not good. Scott asks, um, how would the epoxy hold up near a hearth for our fireplace? Oh man, we just did a hearth with that and it's holding up fantastic. But uh, no, it, it, it does good. You just don't want it near the flames. Okay, you don't want it near like the open flames. All right, before I mix up the top coat, I wanna get my rollers prepped, okay? I do the two roller technique. So I got two rollers here, and I absolutely love these rollers. We're gonna start carrying these rollers. They're a microfiber one quarter inch nap roller. Um, they work the same as the ones at Home Depot do for the one quarter inch nap that are white. Um, th they work really good, but uh, 
I, I just uh, want to make sure that people know exactly what we're using. We had some people use foam rollers, and you're going to get uh, adverse. You're going to get a lot of lap lines if you use foam. So I'm going to take the roller, and I'm just going to make sure it doesn't have any loose fibers. And you know, these don't have a lot of loose. I've, I've noticed that when I do this, there's not a lot left on that tape. So I like them. And I like that they got a purple stripe for the video so that when, when we roll it, you can see, you know, how fast we're rolling. Like, yeah, see if I skipped it, like, it shows it doesn't roll, but it shows you how I'm rolling it. I, when, we, when we were editing the video and I saw that, I went, oh, that's a good visual aid to kind of show the speed and stuff like that in which we're doing this. You know, I understand how it is to watch a video and then want to mimic that to, to do something. I'm actually doing a lot of shower pans right now for a project I'm working on. And so I've learned a lot watching shower pan videos on YouTube. I love YouTube. I, I, I learned how to fix my car locks that, uh, for the, I'm sorry, the actuators for the windows on YouTube. I learned a lot on YouTube. Guys, what's your favorite YouTube channel? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Chris, you know what to do. <laughs> okay, so this one um, will be my dry roller. We're gonna use the two roller technique, okay? So I got a wet roller right here, and this is gonna apply the top coat, and this is gonna remove the top coat. Mike, why are you removing the top coat? Are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. We're doing a dry roll technique. I really saturate the surface with the wet, and then I, I remove most of it with the roller, and then I come back and I dry roll it. This removes excess. It allows me to feather finish this to, to hide any lap lines. Let me explain. Let's say this was wet. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna roll all that wet coating right here on the surface, and I'm gonna use this roller to spread that out, and then I'm gonna do those edges, and then I'm gonna break this up into two sections. I'll go here, then I'll go here, because I'm gonna do about four foot by two foot at a time, and then here's the dry roll. Now the dry roll is important. See this edge of the roller right here? This is where I'm gonna have the weight, okay? So look at that roller. If I push down here, that roller comes up right there, okay? I'm gonna have all the weight right here, but I don't want that coming up, but I just want no weight over here. So when I roll, what that's doing is it's feathering out that coating and I'm moving away from that coating. I'm not going towards the weight, I'm moving away from the weight. So I'll go here and I'll just move away from that weight. And that's how you get a, and I'm gonna overlap 50%, okay? And this is how you get a very professional rolled out finish every time, okay? So wet roller, dry roller, they're different. I just did a video on this and I got two rollers over here. One I put, uh, you know, you could use you could use a long roller or a short roller. You could use one that you've, you know, marked. Here I'm just using two different brands. So I could, you know, make sure. You know, what, what else we're doing is just, you know, we're looking for the best roller that we could find and they're all pretty much the same. You know, they all just have that bar and they're all the same length. You also wanna make sure that it fits in your roller tray, okay? Oh, I just had an idea. I should use this as a mold, make a mold of this tray, and then reverse and pour silicone to make my own silicone tray, and it'd be reusable, man, over and over. Oh, man. Silicone paint trays for top coat. Yes, and less trash. Less trash, less waste. I don't know any rest. <laughs> All right, so that one fits. That one's a little long, so I'm gonna just shove it down there a little bit harder. Okay, now that I'm prepped, I got the lint off, I got my rollers ready, I got my paint tray ready, I'll set those here, and now I'll mix the top coat. If I had a large, large job, the top coat has a pretty tight um, open time. It's not that long, you only got like, like 20 minutes or so, depending on how hot it is. So don't mix up too much. It's all, it's all fine to, to mix another batch, but just, and, and you don't use that much. Once you saturate your roller, you're not using much material. It does take a lot to saturate your roller though. Not a lot, but relatively a lot. All right. I just got a new sander. 
It's battery powered. It's a battery powered random orbital. Does anybody else have one of those, man? I hate cords, so I'm stoked. All right, am I being too boring, guys? We had a question about um, uh, why you were using the motor sander instead of hand sanding. Because I want to make sure that if I have any failures, I can mitigate the variable that it was poor sanding. So I'm really going to do a good job sanding to make sure I have no other issues. And if that was perfect, I could start getting more liberal with my sanding and not as um, stringent on that. But I wanted to be sure that it wasn't the sanding causing poor adhesion. That's why. Good question. Okay, shake part A. Part A has a matting agent, okay? It, it helps knock that sheen level down. So I'm shaking it before I bake it, okay? Part A is the resin. Part B is the hardener, two to one ratio. Okay, I have an old cup here, which I don't recommend as your top coat, but believe it or not, we're out of mixing containers. So I peeled out any of the coating and I'm punching perfectionism in the face. And I'm juicing and no caffeine. My brain isn't quite firing on all cylinders right now. According to a comment here, uh, we just saved a fellow um, $670 on his dream desk. He says, thank you. Heck yeah, man, thank you. Thanks for giving us a shot. Dream desk, that's cool. Two to one. Here we go. Uh, is 99% alcohol fine to use? Yeah, 99% is, is better than less percent because uh, it has less water in it. I use 91 just because that's what's readily available here. Um, but like 70% alcohol has a lot of water in it, so you just need to let it dry longer, you know. But if you squirt that right into the, uh, the coatings, you, you could get some adverse reactions. But people do it and don't seem to have this big problem with it. So it's probably okay at 70%, probably okay at 99%. I just use 91, but uh, yeah, I think you're fine. Okay, putting in one part B to two parts A, okay, and I'm going to get a paint stick and mix this up and then I'm going to add just a touch of water as well. All right. Guys, where are you watching from today? What part of the country or world are you in? It's always fun to see where the audience is, is at. I would love to know. Hey Mike, so how long do you mix for with the stick? Two minutes. Why two minutes? Because um, that's what we mix our other stuff with, with a drill, and it's easy to say on a video. So I just tried it for two minutes and never had a undermixed section yet. So I think two minutes is enough. You might be get away with a minute 45. Might get away with a minute 30. You'd have to test that. You're living dangerous at that point. I say two minutes. Gina wants to know, a customer of hers got a stain on her white countertop she did last year. And uh, would it be sufficient to offer to redo the whole kitchen with ultimate top coat? Um, you know, you can, you can definitely do that. Usually those stains are at the surface or it was acidic that kind of sat there and burned in. Um, but usually you could get rid of that by sanding and yeah, then you could do an ultimate top coat. Um, it doesn't stain easily, but it's usually those, we had a, like orange soda. It, it did leave a stain, but getting it out with alcohol, actually most of it came out with alcohol and then sanding just a tiny bit to, to remove it from that top layer. Good question. I uh, see, you're using a plastic tray for uh, your rolling. Um, let's see, could you also use a metal tray? Sure. I'm gonna use silicone tray pretty soon. But yeah, I, I, I don't see why not. I've never done it with a metal tray yet. 
but I don't know why that would be a problem. You know, everything that you do at scale, if you're gonna do these jobs for people, it's, it's, it's almost like being a scientist. You wanna make sure you do the same process that's, uh, that's repeatable and it's, um, you, you can count on the same results. And so if you're gonna use, just down to your equipment, use the same thing every time so you know, and if you're gonna change one thing, test it. You know, and so a lot of these questions are great questions. I highly doubt that a metal tray versus a plastic tray matters but I just haven't used the metal tray yet. Um, it's, a, it's got water in, in the material, and I don't think water's gonna rust out that, most of those trays are aluminum anyways, but like, water's not gonna hurt that tray in that amount of time, so yeah. I'd confidently say maybe. Has it been two minutes? Feels like it. Feels like two minutes. Okay, I'm gonna be done then. How do you right. uh, calculate how much to mix in your bucket uh, based on your square footage? Um, we have that on the bottles. Me and Chris figured that out. Remember, Chris? Um, but I'm, mix I'm mixing more than I need right now because I'm on a video and I don't want to mix it again for two minutes. Um, but you can always uh, like uh, have pieces ready just in case or read our instructions and they'll tell you exactly how much to, to mix up but I don't remember what we said. Okay, see that? Envelop that roller. And then roll it out, priming the roller. Now I got it pretty sloppy. I'm just gonna take that material and I'm gonna roll it out. And I'm gonna use this material now. I'm gonna go fast now, guys, because um, I got a little more material than I need here. I'm gonna go fast because uh, I don't want these lap lines to set up. So I'm just doing this four foot section at a time. Making sure I don't miss anything. I really don't care what direction I go right now because I'm gonna finish in the grain flow of the piece. Doing the edges. Okay, then I'm gonna basically dry roll with the wet roller right now. Is the top coat, is it uh, good for wood projects? Like we did our wood slab one. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you can see that. I'll show them that when I'm done here, Chris, and then we'll show them that wood one. Okay, where'd my, there it is, dry roller right here. So now I'm gonna dry roll this. Putting all that weight where I showed you, I have, um, I've saturated this, I got an even coat, but now I'm just going through and erasing those lap lines. And I could still see them very faintly, but much less. Luke, can you show them like that versus what I just did? Uh, I don't know how, how well you're gonna show that. Um, it's hard to see on camera. I can see you erasing your lap lines. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of overlap where I'm about to go. Now I'm gonna go with the grain flow here. I probably shouldn't, because I'm kind of low on time now. But let's just go with that. And then if you do have a lap line, you're going with that grain and it's gonna blend right in, but I don't think we'll have any. Yeah, we're okay, we're still wet enough. All right, let's do this next side. Now this next side is important because I wanna blend it in to what I just did. Let me go set this down. So here's where I finished. I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and blend that in when I roll out my, my lap lines. But let me first saturate the whole piece. Okay, I'm gonna do my edges. Remove as much of this as I can with this roller. It looks a little bit milky right now. That's because the, uh, the coating is still wet. That will go away. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove those lap lines.
Nice. Yes. You know, we actually sped up the drying time of this material because uh, it would take more than a day for it to become like ready to install. This is ready to install typically the next day or ready to use in a couple days. So stuff is, is, is awesome for fast turnaround. Okay, that's it. I'll let that dry. I'll show you guys what that looks like after it dries. We'll take some pictures, show you on video, and then we'll try to destroy it. We will try to delaminate this thing. We'll try to dig it out. We'll show you how well or how poorly those two layers worked out pouring it the same day. Did the ultimate top coat, I, I, because no caffeine, I really didn't want to go live again today because I'm, I'm like missing it, but I really wanted to show day one, color, clear. Day two, top coat, done. Wow, what a system. Guys, let's go ahead and answer some Q&A. Um, fire those out and we'll, uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep going. If, if you guys still want to stay, let's talk. If you want to go home or if you want to you know, go turn on some Netflix, kick back, and go uh, you know, eat your high carb meals, go for it. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's go check it out. Let's go, let's go do some Q&A, Chris. All right. Here's some I got queued up for you. All right. Which one am I supposed to look at? Oh, right point. there. How did you get started in epoxy? Oh boy, that's a long story. Uh, you know what? I got started because I couldn't find a product uh, that I loved. And I called chemical companies until one would listen to me. And um, we improved uh, anything that was out there. And, and then we, we really improved it. And now um, we've, we've led the industry now for the last four years in the best products on planet Earth. So I got into it as a contractor trying to find the best product for what I was doing with epoxy. And, um, and it, you know, I had no intentions of starting a company that sold epoxy. I just couldn't find one that I liked. Um, so that's how. Um, I finished my top coat nine days ago, install my sink backsplash this week. If I want to add the top coat, can I do it? Can it be done? Yeah, the top coat isn't that recoat window I'm talking about. It's, it's between, can I apply my top coat later? Yes. You can do it on a job that's really old, but you need that mechanical bond. That's why we sand. Now with the platinum, you're gonna wanna sand even better than with the epoxy, but sand them both good, wipe the dust, and you're gonna get really good results. Um, another question here is, uh, if after your top coat has dried and you find lap lines, can you sand and redo? Yeah, you're gonna wanna sand it though, because again, the top coat doesn't wanna bond to the top coat. Bless you. Luke's back, back there. Uh, Holding the gimbal with one hand, sneezing with the other. Dude, are you getting corona, bro? No. Okay, you better not be. Yeah. No corona. This is a corona-free zone, yes, man. Yes. We've, yeah, yeah. We're within our little bubble right here. Uh, let's see. What's the water in the mixture uh, for from the Philippines? Oh, welcome from the Philippines. Right. You know, I, I, I ate some mango from the Philippines the other day. It was in a package from Costco, and it said, dried mango, Philippines on it, and the mango was like candy, bro. It was, have you guys ever had what I'm talking about? Maybe. Oh my gosh, it was, it was incredible. It was, it was, I got a video on mango. Did you see my video where I devoured that real mango? What, was that the lava counter? No, no, this is a, this is a video. Guys, if you stay tuned to the end and you wanna see I basically was a food critic on wild mango. If you guys are interested in that video, I need, I need a few comments that says I, I want to see that. It's, 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 it has nothing to do with epoxy, but you might like it and you might learn something about mango. If, you, if you're interested, I'll pull it up on my phone and we'll play that video, all right? Uh, let's see. Oh, he asked why do you put the water in that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I started talking about mango. Why do you put water? <laughs> I put water to thin it out a little bit and it gives you a little bit more open time so that you can get those lap lines to stay um, wet enough so that as you dry roll it, it will still flow. If there are, if there's like glue, it doesn't want to like level and hide those lap lines. So that's why the water 
Um, you could add probably more than I add, but I like to keep the coating as unchanged as possible. So I add a little bit of water. It's kind of like art, man. You're gonna add thinner to you know your oil paints. You're gonna add you know a mica or metallic to your additives. It's, it's all just kind of my touch, and, and we put a precise amount on the bottles. Just don't exceed what we put, and, and you'll be fine. Gina says uh, to take an Excedrin. It always helps her after day two on no caffeine. Oh <laughs> yeah, that does. It, do you guys That's have any G. of that? No, man, it, it's got caffeine in it, but it's better than the energy drink, right? It is. I mean, come on, if you're, if you're trying to quit, whatever helps, man. What about this one? All what right. Milled lumber. It says, uh, when going over milled lumber, what's the best way to prevent grain coming through the epoxy? Uh, well, you're not going to have raised grain like you get with uh, water. Um, like, uh, you know, when you're doing water-based uh, coating over over lumber, you're gonna raise the grain on each coat. Uh, sometimes they do that purposely to then sand it and then do your coating. You don't get that with the epoxy, but what you do get is air. So we do seal coats. If you go go watch the video, Chris, can you cue up the video that we just did uh, on the on the wood slabs that Luke edited? Um, let's actually uh, let's actually play that. I want I want to talk about that real quick. So tell me when you're ready on that. So. In the meantime, I'm going to show them piece. Table? Yeah. So, I mean, that's still really, really not dry, but I don't see any lap lines, Luke. All right, hold on. Come back to this. Are they hearing the audio or do I need to talk? Uh, go ahead and talk over it. All right, so this is the LED river table that we just finished. Um, the video's up. It's a, it's a long tutorial about exactly how we do uh, wood grain. Oh, come in, buddy. Is mom out there? Yep. Tell her to come in. I know they haven't seen mom in a little bit. She'll, so guys, if you want to learn how to, um, hey, we are live. Hi, live. <laughs> you got to come, come on, come back here. Come back here. Let's have a little interview. I wasn't prepared for that at all. <laughs> guys, so if you don't know, this is my wife, Catherine. Hi, guys. She is the uh, co-originator of Stone Coat Countertops. That's right. We started this in our living room. Correct. And our kids, Mitchie was part of our original shipping department. You want to come over here, Mitchie? What's up, buddy? What's up? Are you helping mom today? Yeah. So you were my youngest at the time when we started this. Man, look how tall you are. I think you were like this tall when we, maybe this tall when we started. What do you got? Got him. Got him. So uh, this is, don't touch it, but this is that natural sheen. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I love it. It's beautiful. This what, looks really nice. What do you think about the granified and white? I really think that's cool. I love the webbing and the lacing of that. That looks really neat. Do you like the big rocks here or do you like the small rocks? I think it's great to have the variation and have the option of doing both. Looks great. This is some of our pewter metallic in alcohol. Nice. And it's still a little bit milky because of the top coat. Okay. But do you see any lap lines? No. Come on, don't lie. Really look for them. Do you see any? And you're picky, right? Is mom picky? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. He's going to get anybody to point that out. I used to say I was quality control. Yes, she is quality control. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? No, I'm not finding any. We literally just finished this. How long ago? So this is the piece I did yesterday where we did our stone coat platinum. Okay. We did the color and the clear coat in an hour and 37 minutes. Wow. And I, I took it outside in the, how hot is it out there? You, you got your thermometer in the car? It's like 94 right now. Okay, I said 95. Okay. Okay, and uh, we put it outside in the direct sun to see if that would have a reaction or, and, and, and it, it was hot. Right. But nothing. Okay. Perfect. So, do you like this color? Yeah, it Doesn't it's really pretty. What would you call it? Oh, good night. <laughs> I have no idea. What would you? What did you decide to name it? We we haven't. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of doing a recipe called white granite, and doing it like this. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. You know, doing this whole section. This this looks like white granite. 
All right, guys. Like so sandstone or something, right? Um, let's just do a, a quick recap. Uh, Catherine, she actually uh, helped me start this business. We started this together, uh, and and we we now have over 30 people that work full time for Stone Coat Countertops. Right. Uh, we ship all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have a distributor in, in, in Canada. We got a distributor in Australia. We got people that work for us out in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, teamed up with companies like Alumalite and Promarine. We've, uh, we, we've seen this thing evolve. We started with the chemical company that would listen to us and gave us the <laughs> time of day and helped us develop the products that fit this industry. We didn't repurpose products that weren't designed for these things, but they needed to flex and move. We started doing this together in people's homes years and years ago, going to home shows. What do you remember from that? You know, my, it, it's so awesome now to see the difference of how excited so many people are across the world. That's probably my favorite, is just seeing what you guys create. And you know, when we were doing this and doing that you know, home show hustle. Um, people were really excited for us to come in and do the, those countertops and those kitchens for them. And we got to kind of create that. And now the thing that's so fun is to see our insiders, to see, um, you know, some of those other creators come up with their own uses for our product that we would have never come up with, right? So uh, the artists that have used our product, the musicians that use our product, um, the skateboard, skateboards that are yes. created, you know, surfboards that are created. Some of these crazy ideas that we would have never gone probably down that road. Right. But we've been able to see you guys create things with what we brought to the table. And we love that collaboration. That has helped us, you know, go to the next level, come up with new products, fight for new products. Um, so that's what I really love. I mean, that's, that's part of what, you know, seeing those success stories, seeing what you guys take and help build your families, help provide for them and um, help the communities. That we really love. We love to see those stories. So that's what helps us keep going forward. You're managing a huge project right now yes. that's gonna have two stone coat kitchens, yep. three or four stone coat showers, four, yep. uh, vanities, yep. waterfalls, yep. Uh, rock walls, possibly a climbing wall. Yeah. You're trying to get this person to do a climbing wall you like climbing walls? Yeah. Why? Because they're fun and we we race on them all the time for working out and having a good time. Yes. So, Mitchie, you are 12 years old? Yes. This kid's 12 years old, right? Yeah. You, on you won your district in wrestling this year? Yeah. And you're tougher than your dad? No. No. Ugh, no way. Mitchie comes to the shop a lot and helps me, don't you? Yeah. We go, we go on site. You help me a lot. Why do you like helping your dad? What's up with that? Um, I just like it because I learn lots of things in construction. Wait, did you know lots of people are watching? This isn't edited. Like, they're on right now watching. Are you nervous? Very so nervous. So come in here. So, right, there's lots of people watching right there. Go. Um, I like coming with my dad and helping him on all of these projects. Don't because lie. you got to tell the truth. <laughs> 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 because I just get to create such amazing things like... We went to a dentist office and we got to create and uh, use the new platinum and have have to uh, try to play with it and work with it and trying to figure out how actually how it works and now we're just go to a, all of these amazing awesome places and just test it out and um, have good times working and playing with this awesome amazing material. What do you think? This kind of looks like the dentist's office a little bit, huh? Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, nice. I guess I need to get more original. <laughs> so you like to ride skateboards. You saw those skateboards that were created, right? Yeah, those are. Yeah, we have to show those, man. Rick, Rick Lee Valdez, man, on the Stone Coat Insiders Group. You're crushing it. All right. Um, any questions from the audience, Chris, that we could, we could ask uh, Catherine or Mitchie? I'm gonna to have to start watching your life so that I don't walk in like this <laughs> next time. <laughs> you know, I miss. We gotta do. We gotta do a project together soon. I miss this. I miss. You know, the roots that we started this thing. You know, Catherine was always yelling at me, "Stop!" And I'm like, "No, I'm not done." And I think. I think the camera was our marriage counselor because it made us behave more than we would have. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, kind of. 
I say we do a throwback and like no holds bar. If you want me to stop, fine, but I probably wouldn't. You know, I will say one of my very favorite, our, our first live was actually my favorite video we've ever done. It was not your favorite because Mike called me out in that video and said like, let's go compete. <laughs> We're both incredibly no, competitive. I yeah, I guess I did. Yeah, you did. Dang it. And so then it became a competition. If you haven't seen She's that, go back right. to like a throwback, throwback of our life. Yeah, you have your I was, microphone. I was talking to them. Yeah, but you're going. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're hearing. Yeah. So I know all that, guys. I watch the videos. But with that, it was like my favorite, and I like went crazy intense. And I was super jealous because you get to play with this every day and I was like running all the other stuff. Do you want to see a battle? We have to go old school. Battle of the sexes. Battle of the quists. Yes, old school. <laughs> uh, how about this? You use all the old stuff, I'll use the new stuff. I don't You would have to work faster. I don't know. I'd have to come in and practice for a while. How about this? You, you, you pick my palette, I pick yours. No. <laughs> you are setting up so bad. How about this? You pick the palette, I pick the project. Okay. Hey guys, in this video, she picked the palette, I picked the project. It's no hold bards, battle of the sexes, and he's the judge. Mitch? <laughs> he likes you better. Any questions, Chris, or are we going to wrap this thing up? Folks were asking uh, what colors actually you guys would choose before you brought that up. Oh yeah, I mean, what are your favorite colors? Like, let's this say, what are you gonna color. choose for the, the the main kitchen in that project? Um, you know, actually, what we did over at your parents' house is one of my favorites. Yeah. So I love that. We it's similar to this palette, but but similar. I used dark copper instead of bronze. Yeah. And you know what other color I really love is that um, rose gold. Yes. I really love that. I love the teal. You know you, how much I love the teal. Well, that, come on, come on. Who doesn't I love mean, teal? Rhonda Draculis loves the teal. <laughs> she uh, got that for me. I'm, I'm calling you out, Rhonda. You that know, was my favorite. Really? First. Rhonda, she says she got it from you. I don't know. I'm just She's from things. Texas. They like they like their turquoise in Texas. Yeah. Uh, let me let me tell she you. She does some amazing stuff. I I think in all of my projects now, mm -hmm. I'm I'm using white black, mm -hmm. white black everything. So white the white base, black right. paint, white black dye, white black metallic. Right. And then a color, just or one? maybe two, but a color. And I'm finding um, realism in that. You know, I'm finding a lot of realism. Now, you can go crazy, you can right. go crazy, right. but I really, I mean, look at this section of rock right here. Like, get, get out my spray paint blob here, but look at this. Right, so one of the things that I really, and it's beautiful, I think that that's great, but one of the things that I'm excited about this new project is um, that there are, there's tons of space in between each of those areas in, the, in that project, in that house, and so, we don't have to do the same thing. When you have a smaller like apartment or a small condo, you want to kind of keep it the same. Yes. But I I haven't talked to you, but I want to throw some I'm listening. Can I, I multitask? I want, to, I want to throw some like splash of color in some of those spaces. What like, color? Like I think we're going to do this piece in the We're going to do labradorite? Oh. I'm really for this Can one. you believe mom wants to do labradorite? Yeah. I want to do it downstairs. This is one of my yes. Six. I yes. think that would be really cool. Chris, do you like the Chris and I made that one. See, I think we should do this for like the countertop and then like the blue here, babe, for the I don't like that the one. The shower, like that that I don't like that color. Why? You're no. crazy. Tell him he's crazy, guys. I All right, I'm that. pulling up a video for them so we could sign off. Let's ask let, any more questions, what are you Chris. Up? Oh, you've got something here? Yeah. All right. Oh, wait, they got to see Mitchy real quick. Check out Mitchy right here. Guys, you guys want to see Mitchie and his element? What are you doing? Okay, ready? That's Mitchie. We went to the skate park, huh, Mitchie? Yeah, that's in California. Dude, I was terrified to even walk on these, and he's riding wheels down this. Wow. Have you seen this, Luke? Mm-mm. That's pretty cool, right? Nice, man. All right, so guys, what do you do with your Mitchie? I want to know in the comments below. And I got one more. I told him I'd give him the bonus content. You guys want the bonus content? 
I'm gonna Show go find it. Content. I, I've been showing them some bonus content lately. <laughs> Who are you showing them for bonus? I'm showing the whole world. <laughs> we got one good question. Ooh, let's All right, let's hear it. Okay. Uh, Only one. Right now, the uh, top coat is in a natural sheen. Mm -hmm. uh, are there plans for a gloss sheen for the top coat? Yeah, actually, you know, I can't. I'm not happy with any of the uh, gloss sheens, but we we have um, we have something in the works right now. But until then, I would go Art Coat or our original SCC formula if you like that high gloss mm -hmm. and sand and polish. Mm -hmm. Watch those videos. It's it's a, a fantastic method. But if you want the scratch resistance, it's so hard to get with a high gloss. Think about uh, iPhones. How much money do you think they put into that screen material? Actually, you, you know, the most scratch resistant thing that we could find is a coating for eyeglasses, okay? Mm -hmm. That's a really scratch resistant coating. It's extremely toxic and it's very, very, very expensive. It's not practical and it's gotta be sprayed on. It's super good, but it, not for this method. So we have food safe to deal with. We have ease of application to deal with. We have no lap lines to deal with. And we have to have it actually improve the product as opposed to, okay, it's high gloss. We're, we won't okay. just put a product out there to you know, solve an issue. It's, it's got to be better than. So that's we're, we're almost there. Well, we do want to put out products to solve an issue, just not to have you spend money for nothing. Right. If we the, can't the, yeah. do it better, we're not going to sell it to you. See, that's why. What the heck, man? I, I mean, I got to find the. We want to make sure that you understand what we're talking about. Oh, I found it. What are you going to do? You're going to do your video? Mango. Oh, no. Don't give him that video. <laughs> yeah. it's almost hey, like I, this is not a Catherine approved. <laughs> I'm just going to say that this is like one of the. <laughs> Video, you're my, you're, you might walk away from it. Yeah. You might not like Mike after this video. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know what? Say that out loud. Have you ever, like, I watch. All right, I'm on day two of Juicy. Oh, I know. You know how I'm hard that one. is. It's so hard. I'm, I haven't drank caffeine for two days. That I didn't kick. That sucks, right? But yeah. this right here, like, if you think about food shows, we can't watch food shows anytime soon because we're going to get too hungry. Right. All right, ready for this? What are you doing? I'm going to play on my video. This is, <laughs> they, they hung on. How long have we been going, Chris? Too long. Let's see, an hour. <laughs> an hour. They hung on. All right. I'm showing them a mango video. Guys, check out this mango that I have. I'm right here gathering mangoes out in the mango forest here on the big island and i'm going to eat this mango i love these things and i want to show you how to devour a mango are you ready stay tuned enjoy the mango video all right so i'm just going to peel this sucker so good. oh it's so juicy it did it, it, the smell and the aroma Oh, I love this thing. My son Bradley, he was out gathering mangoes with me. And I said, Bradley, do you like mangoes? Oh, look at the, look at the fleshy fruit. <laughs> that was yummy. Uh, and he said he didn't like mangoes. Well, he's crazy. And we're going to convert him here. Because this is a good looking mango. Oh, okay. Look at that mango. Look at, look at how juicy it is. All right, I'm gonna take a first bite. Maybe you should oh. More. Mm. oh, 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 so good. So gross. Mm. Oh, Honey. that mango. A mouthful full of a burst of juice and uh, tangy, sugary water, and uh, the texture is just it's, it's a cross between like a cantaloupe and silk. Um, it's juicy, it's warm and cool at the same time. It's fibrous and just. It's been kissed by the sun. Mm, mm. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, from Stone Coat Countertops, Mitch, get in here. Oh, you, like, did a fake out. Until next time.
You, how about you, 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 you start us off. Until next time from Snow Coda. Ready? Until next time. No, Snow no, Coda. more more enthusiasm. Well, here, let's get back here. Get back here. Okay. This is what we practice at home. More enthusiasm. Really help them feel your excitement. <laughs> get in the middle. Right here. Guys, come on. Give Mitch a thumbs up. Guys, have you not hit the thumbs up button yet? If you're here this long and you haven't done that, that's just lazy. Just hit that button. <laughs> Let's go, Mitchy. Until next time, from Stone Coat Countertops, you, you got, got this. this. We'll see you on the next video. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>